lost, disregarded, and forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be discussing Veterans Stadium, the multi-purpose stadium located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, originally breaking ground back in 1967. It took four years to complete its build, and it opened in April of 1971. It was quickly closed in 2003 and subsequently demolished in 2004, so it really only lasted a little over 30 years. Whether or not you think they got good use out of it, I would say they probably did, considering it was the home to both an NFL team and an MLB team. Of course, we realize that comes with significant issues. Now, when it comes to the birth of Veterans Stadium, as early as 1959, the then Phillies owner proposed a new ballpark for the Phillies on 72 acres. The stadium was approved with a budget around $60 million in the 1960s, which made it one of the more expensive ballparks at the time. The stadium was named by the Philadelphia City Council in 1968 for the veterans of all wars. That's why it was called Veterans Stadium. And that really is a nice throwback compared to what we normally get today. You know, outside of Lambeau Field and kind of the older like Fenway Park, normally all the stadiums are named after something. There's some type of deal, uh, whether it's a company. You know, it's good to see Veterans Stadium. It is a nice name for a stadium for sure. As early as December of 1969, the Phillies expected that they would play the first month of the 1970 season at Connie Mack Stadium before moving into their new venue. However, the opening was delayed a year, the opening to Veterans Stadium, that is, because of a combination of both bad weather and cost overruns. So construction seemingly was delayed because of the bad weather in Philadelphia on finishing the vet and it ended up opening in 1971. And we remember the demise of Connie Mack Stadium, better known as Tribe Park. Or maybe people do you know, know it better as Connie Mack Stadium, but it went abandoned over a six-year span. There was a fire at it, and eventually it did get demolished in 1976, some five years after the Phillies moved into Veterans Stadium. Now, when it comes to the design of Veterans Stadium, it had a very intricate scoreboard display, which was the biggest at its time and cost over $3 million going around you know, parts of the upper deck. And it does, I mean, for the early 1970s, it does look fairly impressive. Now you do have to view it with a 1970s technology lens, not a 2023 lens, because obviously it is completely outdated now, but for the time it was pretty nice. And of course, guys, when it comes to Veterans Stadium, just the design of it, it, it's just a massive upper deck. Very intricate, very large. It is a huge upper deck, very small, rounded, lower bowl going all the way around the outfield. I'm going to be mainly to discussing and analyzing Veterans Stadium when it comes to the baseball, you know, version of it rather than the football because the football is just boring. It's easier to fit. But when you look at the baseball, I mean, it's just a massive, it is a concrete multi-purpose donut, but what makes it a little bit more rare is just the mass amount of seats that filled the upper deck. And originally you can take a look at the color scheme. You know, they said the, the original color scheme was based off of the different fall colors. And you think, you know, I love the fall. It's my my favorite uh, season of the year, but it just does not suit like baseball seats or football seats at all. It just, stadium seats in general. It just looks ugly, man. Like going with all the autumn colors, that does not look good. And later in its life, when it got its renovation, they changed out all the seats and made them like a dark ocean blue, I want to say. And to be honest, Veterans Stadium, even with just changing the seats, it's not like they really did too much in terms of renovations to the stadium. Like this wasn't a Bush Stadium renovation where if you guys remember Bush Stadium kind of looked like Veterans Stadium it was a little bit different but it had the circular upper deck and they actually removed seats from the upper deck they did not do that to Veterans Stadium because at that point you know it was hosting both football and baseball and you can't just remove seats for baseball because you still need them for football the capacity of course was pretty ridiculous at over 60,000 for football it's completely normal for baseball it is totally obnoxious and the stadium only lasts just over 30 years but again you could argue because it hosted both Eagles games and Phillies games that they got their money's worth for this multi-purpose stadium if you're wondering 30 years seems like a very small amount it is, but you also have to understand in terms of multi-purpose stadiums, they went out of style so fast 
and Philadelphia knew that, and that's why you saw both Lincoln Financial Field and Citizens Bank Park, which, by the way, those are two really good stadiums. I would consider both of those. I mean, you could argue with Lincoln Financial Field, maybe it's not top 10. It's solid. You know, maybe it's a little bland, but certainly Citizens Bank Park, especially during the playoffs, has just been amazing the past few years, and I would expect Citizens Bank Park to be there for at least 40 more years or so, maybe grandfathered in as an all-time great stadium. But getting back to Veteran Stadium, the other thing you could talk about, yes, it did have a jail, It was installed late in the 90s because, I mean, the games were just so ridiculous. The Eagles fans were out of control. The opposing fans were out of control. You know, the Eagles fans have always been one of the notorious fan bases of the NFL, booing Santa Claus, of course, but they had to put a jail in with a courthouse or a courtroom, I should say, and a judge under the thing. And that was kind of a big story when it came to Veterans Stadium, but it really didn't receive much of a renovation outside of the facelift of changing the seats. That's really the only thing it got, and it was demolished in 2004. It really never went abandoned. The time span between its closing and officially being demolished was only about six months. It closed in September of 2003 and was demolished in March of 2004. So the city of Philadelphia definitely... Uh, evolved quickly in terms of these multi-purpose stadiums with kind of the concrete design, full AstroTurf, the, the bad cookie cutter infield. They went out of style. The stadium boom with Oriole Park at Camden Yards, Coors Field, and Jacobs Field entering the fray, all of those being built in, you know, in a four-year span in the early 1990s. Veterans Stadium was also considered one of the worst playing surfaces around It was originally composed of AstroTurf and contained many gaps and uneven patches. In several places, seams were clearly visible, and it was given the nickname Field of Seams and was routinely considered the worst NFL field in player surveys conducted by the NFL's Player Association, and visiting players often got injured on the field. And, and yeah, that's the whole thing with the old AstroTurf. We're dealing with it nowadays where it's it's certainly upgraded from what it was. I mean, could you imagine playing on some... Remember when Tropicana Field, tr- both Tropicana Field and uh, Rogers Center had just crazy... Ba- it, it was like a tennis match with the base. But do you guys remember that? It, it wasn't... I can't even call it turf. I mean, I don't, I don't know what it was. Uh, but yeah, some of the stuff these guys used to play on for NFL... I mean, think about how spoiled the NFL players are today. They have this turf that's just maxed out, that's like perfect. And they're... And, and I'm not saying it's... They shouldn't complain, but compared to what it was, man, it was horrible to play on compared to what it is now. But even now, they're saying... Everyone needs to go to grass. I've done videos on it, but Veterans Stadium had a terrible, terrible surface uh, in terms of that. And Veterans Stadium also hosted the Temple Owls. Boy, you, you got to feel bad for Temple. Temple goes from Veterans Stadium to Lincoln Financial Field. I mean, think if you think Lincoln Financial Field is bad for college football, especially for a team like Temple, you'd be right. But you know what's even worse? veteran stadium. It's got just the crazy capacity. Temple really needs to somehow build their own stadium, but I've heard that they have no room on campus to actually do it. Either way, guys, I wanted to discuss veteran stadium. It was built during the boom and the height of the multi-purpose stadiums, and it left very quickly, and it's really not remembered because it's just kind of lumped in with all the other multi-purpose stadiums, although I think when you compare it to a lot of the other multi-purpose stadiums, like an RFK, like an Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, it is a little bit different because it has that massive upper deck and a very small lower ball. I think it probably, I mean, it is a worse design. It's just a massive wall of seats in the upper deck, and it is kind of an intricate upper deck along with its intricate scoreboard makes it unique, and certainly when they changed the seating colors, it was at least a little bit more palatable when it came to actually judging the stadium, the exterior of the stadium. It's completely hollowed out. It's a concrete mess. There's really nothing you can say, but that was all the multi-purpose stadium back then that were built in this time frame. There's really no point in renovating this. It would just be a complete waste of money, and Philadelphia knew that, so they just built brand new stadiums for both the Eagles and the Phillies. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.